Hi friends, my question for you today is, what is the price of living? Hi, my name is Aliza Davidovit, and thank you for watching The Source, God's answers to life's hard questions. A couple of years ago, maybe last year, President Biden said on a trip to Israel that seeing Israel thrive is close to miraculous. And he was almost right. But the success of the modern state of Israel, in spite of every single threat and obstacle it has faced and continues to face, is not close to miraculous. It is miraculous. And we all know who makes miracles happen. And yet somehow we find it so hard to give credit where credit is due because we know that when we know, we owe. So we pat ourselves on the shoulder and conveniently convince ourselves that our own ingenuity and our own persistence are the reasons why we have succeeded. And this faulty mindset is not just common among people, it's also common among nations. But the state of Israel is not like any other country, nor are the Jewish people like anyone else. We know because we can see it with our own eyes. We know because God has told us in his Torah, you shall be to me a treasure out of all people. If you don't believe me, look it up. Exodus 19.5. But for some of us, who are ignorant, intentionally or unintentionally, arrogant, blinded by all other things, and we don't take God at his word, then we really have facts to look at, facts on the ground. Jewish people have made significant contributions in every field, including physics, chemistry, medicine, literature, economics. And relative to the number of Jews in the world, we have won a disproportionate, a disproportionate amount of Nobel Prizes. Let's do the math. There are approximately 2.6 billion Christians in the world, 2 billion Muslims in the world. But as for Jews, there are only 16 million Jews, which is 0.2% of the 8 billion worldwide population. And yet, our voices, well, they're hardly muted. We are the tiny little David facing a schizophrenic Goliath. And by that, I mean that one day the world loves us, but most of the days they hate us. And yet the Jew and Israel are still here while the world's greatest empires, Rome, Assyria, Greece, Persia, they're all dust. They're forgotten. And if it wouldn't be for our high school history classes, we wouldn't even ever know that they existed. And yet, as Mark Twain said, all things are mortal but the Jew. All other forces pass, but he remains. What is the secret of his immortality, Twain asks. And my answer to you is, not Joe Biden, not any American president. When Biden was in Israel in that same speech, he said that Israel is a nation that will never dwell alone, as long as there's the United States. And yet, that gracious tongue, which offered such reassuring words, words of solidarity, has yet to extend an invitation to Israel's Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu, who won an election in November. Where is the invitation, my friend? Where is the invitation to a country who will never be alone? You might not like Benjamin Netanyahu, but we, the people, have voted him in. My friends, the Jewish people will never be alone. 
because the God of Israel lives among us, if we let him. And let me fill in the words which I replaced by a few dots in the quote I said before. And now, if you obey me and keep my commandments, my covenant, you shall be to me a treasure out of all peoples, for mine is the entire earth. As people functioning in the real world, if we're honest, we have to admit that in all of our worldly affairs, we believe one hand washes another. We believe you do and you get a result. In every relationship, we know how to squeeze out the best results for ourselves. But when it comes to our relationship with God, we're ready to collect with both hands, but we're ready to serve with neither. What right actually do we have to the land of Israel, who are all so proud of the Israeli army, the Iron Dome, we're so proud. What right do we have to that land altogether, if not for the Holy Torah? But that same Torah that you refer to when you assert your possession of the land, that Torah is not just a land deed. It's the holy word of Hashem teaching us, instructing us how to live our lives. Keep Shabbat, keep kosher, give charity, be honest in business, keep your hands and your eyes off of someone else's wife and property. And if we would really behave, if we would really do what we are instructed and commanded to do, there really will be always one to rely on, as it's written in Psalms. I shall raise my eyes to the mountains. From where will my help come? My help is from the Lord, the maker of heaven and earth. He will not allow your foot to falter. Your guardian will neither slumber nor sleep. In this week's Torah reading, we see how King Balak sought out Bilam to curse the Jewish people. But Bilam was unable to curse them. Do you know why? He was unable to curse them because the Jewish nation was behaving properly. How goodly are your tents, O Jacob, your dwelling places, O Israel. The Israelites left no void or crevice for curses to sneak in like an open wound accommodating an infection. They were impervious to any harm because they didn't open the door to the Satan by sinning. And as such, you'll love this if you're a yente and you like high drama and vengeance. As such, those who cursed them would be cursed. And the haters, they would drown in the deep end of their own hate and envy. You know, I personally can never forget many years ago when a newspaper interviewed a Hamas member and he was a frustrated, upset, begrudging person. And he said, their God, meaning the God of Israel, changes the path of our rockets midair. Yes, that is the God of Israel. When you behave, you will not go bankrupt. You will not get sick. Your innocent will not die. Your land will not reap weeds and thorns, but rather produce richness of product. The word of God is what sustains us. And yet we are too lazy or too arrogant or too ignorant or too busy to know from where the breath of our life is emanating. Kabbalists teach that each act that we do creates an angel, either one that serves as our advocate or as our prosecutor, depending on the deed or the misdeed. And if you kind of can't fathom that thought, think of it this way. Physics teaches us no energy is ever lost. It just changes forms. So basically actions are energy. And so the question is, what kind of army of angels or energy are you building for yourself, for our nation, good ones or bad ones? 
Are you building spiritual iron domes by keeping the commandments and following the Torah? Are you empowering God to help you? Or are you tying his hands? That six million Jews died should not have us questioning where was God, but rather should instigate self-reflection. Where were we as a Jewish people that a calamity of such epic proportions could happen altogether? The Jews in Israel are still uniquely the target of opprobrium when all other types of disenfranchised groups have earned unprecedented acceptance legally and otherwise. That anti-Semitism seems to be as durable as Mark Twain's Jew. The Jews in Israel have gained miraculous success should have us reckoning with the fact that Jewish people have been singled out for greatness. And what God wants from us is not simple. And if you treat me with happenstance, it is written. If you treat me with happenstance, with casualness, doing what you want to do as you please, and you do not wish to listen to me, I will add seven punishments corresponding to your sin. You see, my friends, the Torah is not like a warranty that we can opt out because we don't want to pay the big price or the extra price. The Torah is the book of life, and it is the divine guarantee that we will pay the price if we do dare to opt out. And I hope that is something to think about. Shabbat Shalom. Thank you.